of n. Once you have this explicit formula, you can plug in a Google, and you can plug in 10 to the power. And this takes four seconds. You get almost a million digits. You get 869 roughly. I don't know exactly. Cannot be contained in this page. It's a it's a hundred, yeah, a hundred times. You need a hundred pages uh, to write this number on paper. But it's on my computer, you're welcome to look it up. <laughs> yeah, this number. And maybe you can do it in four seconds. But before describing how we did it, let's describe how Joel did it. It was a little bit embarrassing that I didn't think about it before. Of course, I knew about this option. So the way Joel did it is as follows. The rational function, the, the generating function of P sub 60 P sub 60 of n is a rational function with 60 terms. Now, whenever you have a rational generating function, you can break it up and have a similar recurrence we had before, but with finitely many memory. So in this case, if you break it down, we have a degree, point number of degree, 60 to 2. 60 times 59 over 2, don't tell me. And it's 60 times 60 minus 1 over 2. So it's 1800 minus 30, 770. And we have polynomial. And if you you have a so-called recurrence equation or relation with constant coefficients. So let me describe how to do it for a much simpler rational function. How to compute? Go to the power n, fast. By definition, so if the, consider the simpler sequence, the power of two. So the rational function is one over y minus two x. Cross multiplying, we have the beautiful recurrence. A of n equals 2 times A of n minus 1. And if you want to find 2 to the power 100 and you are stupid, you first find A of 1, then A of 2, then multiply by 2. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. And after 100 steps, you get it. But if you are smart, you do 2, 4, 16, 26. Repeated exponentiation. This recurrence relation implies this recurrence relation. If n is even, and something similar with n. So now, instead of all n time steps, it's all log n steps. This is called a polylog algorithm. So something analogous can be done for any recurrence. A little bit more complicated. So let's do it for the Fibonacci. The famous Fibonacci numbers are given by the following rational function. Sigma f sub n times x to the power n and goes from 0 to infinity equals x over y minus x minus x squared. Cross multiplying and comparing coefficients, you get a nice recurrence 
f sub n. If it's f sub n minus 1, that's f sub n minus 2. And the initial conditions, f sub 0 is 0, f sub 1 is 1. But you have it, you can compute any number. So if you want to compute f of a million, in a million steps, you can get it. But that's the stupid way. Define the vector f sub n plus 1 f sub n. And this recurrence implies the following recurrence for this particular vector of two dimensions. So f sub n plus 1 is this matrix 1, 1, f sub n, n sub n minus 1. And f sub n, it is 1. Okay, this makes it. Let's call it A. So this vector, let's call it ball space F sub n is A, this matrix A. Thanks. Now the same trick of repeated exponentiation you can do for these matrices. And once again, we have it in poly log time. And now A is 2 by 2. Before, uh, it was a 1 by 1. Now it's 2 by 2. So what George did, use this built-in thing that Paris has to convert a rational function. So his matrix has that many entries. A 1770 dimensional matrix. And he did repeated exponentiation. So he raised A to the power of Google. But he didn't do it with the Google times. So the number of ways for Joe to get a to the power of Google, the number of operation is log of a Google, not Google, Google, <laughs> which is, I don't know, roughly 300, whatever. Not as many operations. Of course, huge, huge matrices with huge, huge numbers. That's why it took him two hours. And about 10 years ago, or 20 years ago, before, he would not be able to get it. I would have not have to pay. <laughs> but nowadays, computing gets so fast, so it's dangerous to offer any prices. If you do it that by the vanilla uh, algorithms. But how to do the same thing in a fraction of a second? This is nice, but it's too general. We have to use the special structure of this generating function. This is indeed a rational generating function. But it's a very special generating function. Can anybody tell me what's special about it? What are, in Fibonacci, the roots are the so-called golden ratio. Mm -hmm. One plus one, two. two. What are the roots of the unity? Very good! They are all roots of unity. So you can factorize them over the complex numbers and do partial fraction decomposition. And it's easy to see that they are quasi polynomials. Polynomials are very easy to compute. And quantum polynomials are almost as easy to compute. So what is a quantum polynomial? So quasi polynomial is, for example, of period 3, or of period M, or period K. P of N is, sorry, let's, uh, let's call it, I don't know, F of N. Some polynomials, f n is congruent to 0 mod k. Another different polynomial, if n is congruent to 1 mod k. So you have, for each congruent class mod k, you have a different polynomial expression. So for a computer, it's always as easy to compute it. If you input an n, you just find out the modulo. And you do it, you take the remainder after you divide by k. 
See if it is applicable, plug it in and get it. So what is the period here? If you do it, exercise for you. You could do it. The period is the least common multiple of one, two, up to 60. The thanks to the prime number theorem is roughly e to the power 60. Lots and lots and lots of cases. So if you do it naively, you use the fact that it is quite a polynomial and do it completely, it's hopeless once again. But now I'll go back to calculus, calc 2, where we tortured our students this obsolete way of indicating rational functions by writing it in terms of partial fractions. But not over the complex, if you factorize it, or in maple, you get a product of so-called thick atomic polynomials. So you factorize it, and you have a certain whatever, over thick atomic polynomials, and J also and possibly powers. And that was Cayley's brilliant idea. And then you look at every individual piece, every individual piece with a subsequent polynomial is a quasi polynomial of a certain period between 1 and 60. So my beloved computer, first, Maple has a very fast convert to partial fraction. So you do convert, and that's really nothing new. It all goes back to Kelly, except Kelly did not have Maple. If Kelly had Maple, he, he could have done it himself. So convert this part frac. And then, you take every piece individually. And for every piece individually, we know the period. And let Maple find the Taylor expansion for this, for each piece. And we know a priori that there's a certain quasi-polynomial with a given period. And we know a priori what is the degree. So it's all guessing. Pure, naive guessing, yet completely rigorous. So then you fit it for every piece. You take enough data and you do data fitting and maple guesses and polynomial that a posteriori, you know, is the answer. So we did it for each particular piece and we express P sub 60 of n as a sum of 60 quasi polynomials. In, in the maple format. Having done this, uh, in our, in our uh, particular data structure that I won't go into, you're welcome to look it up. And then, when you plug in into the data structure, all you have to do is plug in polynomials, uh, quasi polynomials, polynomials. So then, when you plug in n equals 10 to the power 100, we got it in 0 0.04 seconds. But to get to this step, to get these quadratic polynomials, took 300 seconds. But since it takes 300 seconds, we were very, very nice. We saved it on the computer. And now you go to this maple package. It's pre-computed. So everything up to 70. P sub m of n expressed a sum of quadratic polynomials. So we did a great service for humanity. Every time anybody wants to know, for example, P sub 65 of 10 to the power 10,000, say. You don't have to do this from scratch. This is Google, uh, this maple package partitions. And you get it in a fraction of a second. So this is our amount of symbol crunching. The 300 seconds for each of them, and maple found it once and for all, saved it. It's all public now. Everybody who has maple can go and plug it in and get all these numbers uh, that you do. So in particular, uh, what Joe could, could not yet do 
we did in four seconds after the initial investment. And this is. So let me stop and let me conclude with some predictions about the future. Yesterday, I went to look for my hero's collected works, Ramanujan. On the way to Ramanujan's collected work, very close to it, I found this great antique table of natural logarithms. Pretty heavy. 500, 500 pages. And what it did have 16 decimal digits of log natural of I for I between 1 and 50,000. Table of natural logarithms. It's amazing it's in the library. It hasn't been archived. It's nice. It's not okay. It smells so good. I love it. <laughs> Federal Works Agency. How many people did it? Volume one, logarithm to the integers of the integers from one to fifty thousand. Arnold N. Lohan, PhD, technical director. Technical staff. Gertrude Blanche. I look her up in Google. She's an amazing woman. Trust to live to be almost ninety-nine years old. So uh, doing number crunching could uh, lead to a long life. So she was a pioneer of computing. She had a PhD later in life because she was very poor and only after her parents died she could afford to go to graduate school and at the age of 40 she got a PhD from Cornell. But it was during the depression and she was a woman so the combination of depression and woman she couldn't get any job as a, as a mathematics professor. So she went and had some office manager job in a fancy office in Manhattan. But she took some classes in Brooklyn College because she wanted to keep her uh, mathematical uh, abilities uh, and mathematical alive. And then she met the instructor, and the instructor tried to recruit her to this project, a very important project, the mathematical table project. So her job was to hire human computers. She supervised human computers. And that's how the computer the first 50,000 terms of log nature of I. But not from scratch. How did they do it? They used some German guy called Wolfram. Way, way back from 1781. He had a table of log nature of prime numbers for, I don't know, up to whatever, 2000. And using the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, and the fact that, that some students have trouble with. <laughs> <laughs> and they cheated. It was not completely hand calculations. They used adding machines. They had an adding machine, but they were un very unreliable. They had to oil it all the time and get it. So that's out of fun, curiosity. In my personal journal, Shalom Biachad, they produced the whole book, except she only did up to 40. In 70 seconds, you had a do loop for I from 1 to 49 for 50,000, a print advance of Ln of I. In 70 seconds, you could produce this thing that took at least 20. Not everybody listed here, only the supervisors. There are six supervisors, and each of them had about 10. A com human computers under them. And well, 60 people maybe took several months uh, to do in 70 seconds. But I was a little bit disappointed uh, that it took so long. I was expected it took only one second. So still, it's amazing what they did. Today, we make fun of it. Today, we think it's obsolete. But in 100 years, Andrew Wiles, Grisha Perlman, and anybody in this room will be completely obsolete. <laughs> Simple crunching now is complete trivialty. But simple uh, number crunching, sorry, number crunching. But simple crunching would also be developed. And what Andrew Wise and his company mostly do is simple crunching. 
This is a tiny bit of idea crunching, and this is a territory, territory where humans can still have something to do for the next few hundred years. But to use our ideas most forcefully, don't waste your time on number crunching, dear Andrew. If you have a great idea, learn how to program, teach your ideas to the computer, and let the computer take it from there. And you'll be able to prove not just the theorem, but many other things, maybe the human hypothesis. Thank you very much.